Well, the Supreme Court currently handing down dozens of rulings this month. It is expected that the Dobbs v. Jackson ruling could come at any time this month. That is the one that could overturn Roe v. Wade. Meanwhile, this Congress on the move here to pass new legislation to give additional protection to Supreme Court justices. I believe this is going to the House here today, and we're going to get to more of that in a moment. And it comes after an armed man, though, is facing an attempted murder charge for allegedly saying he wanted to kill one of the justices. Brett Kavanaugh, near his Maryland home, was where he was apprehended there. Joining us to discuss is the president of the Southern Evangelical Seminary, Judge Phil Ginn. Judge, good to see you, and thank good you morning, so much. Good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for taking the time for our viewers this morning. Um, My pleasure. So the, the ruling hasn't came out. The leaked opinion has, um, and that seemingly prompted a man to uh, an attempted assassination on Brett Kavanaugh, per police reports. Um, I'm just curious your thoughts on this and, and, and the, uh, the outcry of those that do not agree with the leaked opinion. Um, what does faith tell, tell folks in terms of this ruling of where this goes and, and, and how to respond to something like this? If, if, if Roe gets overturned, uh, give me a faith perspective. Well, at SES, we, uh, we are great proponents of natural law, Sean, which basically says that this is both a faith issue and a moral issue. It's a common sense issue. Um, certainly, uh, faith determines our morals to a great extent, and we believe that the morals of our nation uh, come from our faith, and, and it's just not Christian faith. It's a, it's a morality that comes and, and cuts across most faiths uh, in, in this nation. And that was uh, certainly uh, propounded in our early founding documents. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a question that a lot of people who are proponents of abortion or choice or whatever they want to call it uh, can't deal with. And that is at some point in time, uh, the entity that is inside a mother's womb begins to have rights. Uh, it begins to have humanity. And that's what I think a lot of the argument is over. Uh, but with a lot of uh, what we're seeing, uh, certainly nationally in uh, opponents, they don't ever think that the rights of humanity ever apply to, to a child in the womb. And talking about the laws of the land, um, if I could jump into the Bible in terms of Christianity, it talks about, there are verses that talk about abiding by the laws of the land. Absolutely. Absolutely, it does. And, and the, the main uh, concept of, of Christianity in regard to a citizenship of a, of a nation is to uh, have security, uh, to uh, be able to proclaim the gospel message. And certainly in America, that's a little bit different because we, we have a different form of government than was ever uh, contemplated uh, in the lines of Scripture. Uh, but we are certainly uh, a moral, to be a moral people and to be a law-abiding people, uh, Christians ought to be the best, uh, the best citizens that a nation could have. In terms so that's of, what we, uh, we propound, at least. Absolutely. And in terms of security for Supreme Court justices, and this just in, that the House is now uh, working to vote on that security bill to now protect Supreme Court justices and their families, this coming after an armed man is facing an attempted murder charge for allegedly saying he wanted to kill Justice Kavanaugh near his Maryland home. He was found with a gun, a couple of magazines, ammunition, tools to get in that, the house, duct tape, zip ties. You can only imagine if this uh, suspect was, was able to um, go through with whatever plan that he may have had at that time and knowing he has children and his family, I mean, for anyone, let alone a Supreme Court justice, but this over uh, the opinion that leaked out. Um, it took some time for the House to vote on this. The Senate passed it unanimously. Some, For some reason, the House dragged the feet. But um, from your experience, Judge, um, what goes through your mind on this in terms of protecting uh, these nine justices? Well, certainly, I... Uh... From, from having a judicial background, I would say to you, Sean, that judges themselves are probably some of the most likely candidates for an assassination attempt, and, and yet we're the most vulnerable, or at least uh, the uh, justices on the Supreme Court are. Uh, and it almost seems as if there is encouragement toward uh, that venting of rage against the justices in some aspects of our government 
yeah. particularly in some of our House members. This ought to be a no-brainer. Uh, our justices deserve the protection of the president. Uh, they're uh, certainly, if you don't like the ruling uh, of a particular judge or justice in this case, uh, taking that justice out by uh, an assassination is certainly a way to change the uh, the numerical uh, majority of a, this of the Supreme Court in this particular situation, oh, and sure. it's frightening. Right. And the, the outcomes obviously severe in the, even in terms of not Absolutely. only the tragedy alone, the administration currently would have to appoint uh, a new justice there, as that is how the Constitution states it to happen. Judge Phil Ginn joining us live out of time with you, Judge, but always good to see you. Thank you for taking the time for our viewers. It's my pleasure. Look forward to seeing you again, Sean. Thank yes, you very much.